you're 100% responsible for your own life. Mm-hmm. Make it your best life. Yeah. You know, what is which what is your best life? First you got to figure out what what do you want out of life? Mm-hmm. What's what what's your passion? Mm-hmm. And do your passion because once you start doing your passion like what we do, I don't ever work. I never work a day. Yeah. And I, and I I don't think I've worked a day in seven years. I really don't. Yeah. Because it's my passion. Yeah. I love seeing people grow and getting what they want out of life. Mm. Hello and welcome. This is Brian Delaney with Unlock Potential, where we get together with top experts in their field who have simple, profound advice to help you and I live better lives, to be able to be more fit to serve the people around us and answer that question, the question that nags within all of us. How good can I be and how great can I make it for people around me? Well, and welcome to Unlock Potential. This week's episode, I'm joined by Mr. Marshall Wayland, a dear friend of mine, a mentor, um, a partner, uh, both in business and life. I've gotten to learn so much from this gentleman, and I'm excited for you to learn with us today. Hey, Marshall. How's it going? Brian, I'm doing fantastic, buddy. Awesome. Thanks for having me here today. I'm so glad you came. And uh, it's great to always sit down and talk with you, whether it's on Zoom, in person, prefer in person, but at your house on the lake. That was the last time we did that. That was a blast. Um, just get to learn so much from you and just really, uh, really love the energy you put out there, how you impact the people around you. It's really remarkable. And I just wanted people to maybe gain some insight into your thought patterns, just kind of what you've done and how you've done it so that if they replicate those things, they can uh, experience a piece of the success that you've been able to, and I've been able to as a result of your mentorship. So um, yeah, I would ju- uh, just, let's start off with one thing. I, I, I like to give, uh, I like to give the meat on the front end and then we'll go into your story. So I remember you talking about um, when you and your financial services company have a new person that comes on board. And one thing that you have them do is to read and to journal and to send those notes uh, to you on a daily basis. Um, You had talked about before why you did that, and I would just love for people to hear that from you. Well, absolutely. And first of all, thanks again for having me. And uh, everything that I say is nothing's original everything i've done is just copied the good mentors of myself so. hey listen we get to we get to play that game together right? exactly <laughs> my brother exactly so uh yeah uh you know self-development reading was one of the last things on my mind whenever i got into in business you know i figured i did all my reading uh, back in school and stuff like that and i never had to read another book again and that's that's the way i felt you know and i i was in the uh mortgage business for many years and I just never read anything or any books at all. Yeah. And a mentor of mine that when I, when I got out of the financial field, I came into the insurance field. Um, I asked him to be a mentor of mine and he said, sure. And one of his first questions was, what are you reading? And, uh, I thought it was an odd question, Brian, to be honest with you. Uh, and he stumped me right away. And that was his first question. The Reader's yeah. Digest while yeah, I'm on the pod? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> you know I, and in the morning, I just told him, well, I'll read about the stocks and the bonds because that's all that really mattered in, in interest rates. Yeah, yeah. They move up and down and vice versa. Yeah. So he says, well, no books. What kind of books do you read? And I said, oh, I really haven't read books since college. And he looked at me and he said, well, if you don't read books, I consider you illiterate. And he ended up just walking away from me. <laughs> and, I, and my mouth dropped, Brian. I was like, oh, my gosh, nobody's ever put me in my place that fast. Yeah. So at that moment, I thought, I better get, get on the ball and start this reading thing. Yeah. And uh, and then I end up another mentor of mine, Casey Watkins. Mm-hmm. Um, I met with him once, and he asked me what I wasn't doing on our four cornerstones. Yep. And uh, I looked at Cornerstones and said I wasn't reading 10 minutes a day. And that's simply how I got started reading because I asked him, I said, that's the only thing I'm not doing on the four Cornerstones is is not reading. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, well, 
So when are you going to start reading? I said, well, today. So, <laughs> a guy like Casey Watkins telling me to start reading, I start reading. Yeah, me too. I'm with you on and, that. Uh, <laughs> but then I found out, I talked to him a, a couple of weeks later, and he said, uh, how's that book going? I said, well, honestly, Casey, not very good. Mm. So uh, I I can read, and I can power through a book in a, you know, a, couple, in a week or two, but I really don't understand what I read. Mm. And if I read the first page, I go to the second page, I totally forgot the first page. Oh, yeah. So why is this Casey? Is he just simply said, well, read one page, put the book down, and write two things about the page you just read. Yeah. And it was simply what I learned from that reading and how I could help somebody. And they were the two things. And so I started good. journaling, you know, 12 years ago Yeah, because of that. And that's the smallest thing I ever did that made the biggest difference in my business life. Mm-hmm. So now I start new people in my business that really want to be uh, a difference and make an impact on life. Mm-hmm. And I'll ask them to do the same thing for me is to start reading 10 minutes mm-hmm. a, a, a day and just text me at the end of the day two things, what you learned and how you can help somebody. Mm-hmm. And I ask them to do it for a full month. And when they do it, they've changed their whole habit of life. Yeah. And it's amazing how I get to know somebody that way. Yeah, yeah. I think that's so interesting because the first time I heard that from you, and I, I, every time I hear that, I love hearing it because it's a reminder. It's like people think they have to be good at reading or good at focusing or good at sitting down. They think there's all these requirements to getting into it. It's like, can you read a page? Yeah. It's like, can you read a paragraph? Where do you need to start in order for it to be accessible? Because the reading is the point, not the quantity. Or I mean, you'll get there, yeah. right? But we got to start somewhere. And when it comes to starting somewhere, especially in relationship, I love that you start with development rather than drama. Mm-hmm. That's that's so cool because it's so easy, especially when you're building a sales team or a sales and leadership team or um, really just getting to know somebody on a professional level to ask that question, how are things going? And they may be coming out of a situation. A lot of times they're coming out of a situation that they're ready to change. Right. They don't, they don't want to keep that uh, situation persisting. And by you focusing your relationship on that development, you can just talk about how things are getting better yeah. and how they're getting better and making those things better. And I think that is simple and profound and incredibly, uh, incredibly helpful. Um, and just getting to watch that in other people too. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so grateful to be able to 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 read the first two or three days mm-hmm. of text and then the last thirtieth day. You can tell somebody has grown so much in thirty days. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And I it just makes me feel good and it always reminds me of my mentor Casey yeah. telling me how to read again. Yeah. You know? Now I can read a whole ten pages and, and remember everything. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> That's it and it's so cool because like you had had success in the past. You had success in uh, uh, with another financial service company where you ran your agency uh, before you uh, came over to Symmetry and started with uh, Casey. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. I remember when you first started coming around and just watching you grow has been an awesome journey for me. And I've learned so much just from being able to look over your shoulder and be like, what's Marshall doing over there? <laughs> and so, um, but the... Um, you, you've had success in the past. And I think one of the pitfalls for people like us when we're starting a new business and we have a kind of those guides by our side can be our ego. And it's like reading, you talk, it's kind of like the Alan Iverson practice. You talking about practice, <laughs> right? It's just, it, we, we can get into that space. And so how, how do you keep your, even despite all your success, how do you keep your ego in check? Honestly, Brian, it's because of, it's not me that does anything. I just, again, just simply, simply following a proven system. And the proven system is self-development. It really is because yeah. the more we grow ourselves, the more we have opportunities to grow other people. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just becomes a lifestyle. I can't believe this is my life now. Mm-hmm. It's just... Getting to know people. Yeah, you know, we get paid by the more people we get to hang out with. Yep. The more friends we make, the more finances come into our bank account. It's yep. a crazy, crazy concept. Yeah. But that's as simple as it is. It yep. is. 
you know, I want to go meet somebody, go hang out, go to dinner with them. You know that? It's, yep. What a great lifestyle. That we exactly. And they call that building business. Yes. They call that work, right? Yes, yeah. It's hard work. Very hard. Very hard. <laughs> that, that, that hard labor. It yeah. is. And sometimes we get to, you know, have dinners all over the world. Oh, know? yeah. Oh, yeah. We're always meeting people and always going on trips together, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's special. Um, talk a little bit about uh, where uh, where you're from. Grow, uh, what, what was growing up for you like? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I grew up in a small little town called Cumberland, Maryland. It's uh, west of Washington, D.C., about three hours up into the mountains Yeah, near West Virginia. You're up on the Potomac River, and, uh, you know, I was a little river rat growing up. But, uh, <laughs> you know, back then it was, uh, it was only sports to do in that little town. Mm -hmm. We played sports or we got in trouble. <laughs> so my, my dad pretty much raised me in every sport because he would coach every, every sport that I ever played in. Okay. And that was my entire life was just winning in sports. Not that I was that good at it, but boy, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so that's, you know, it was a very simple life. Mm -hmm. you know, my dad worked in a manufacturer. It was very medium income, medium low income. And we didn't know it. We didn't know we were poor, but we kind of were. Yeah. <laughs> Looking back in yeah. hindsight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's little two bedroom, little, uh, brick houses. Yep. And probably about 800 square foot. Yep. That's what I grew up in. Yeah. 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 yeah a palace. Exactly. Right. <laughs> it was. It was a little bit. Yeah. Of course. That's a cool thing is when you're, uh, as an adult and you're raising kids, what you don't realize is their perspective. Mm -hmm. An 800 square foot house can look like a mansion just because they're so small. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> you, you've got like four or five years, maybe even longer to, to get your stuff together and start, uh, Start really driving. Well, it took me longer until oh. until high school until I realized we were poor. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were just hunting and fishing and, and growing food because I was hanging out with my dad. I didn't realize that we had to do that to eat. Yeah. So. <laughs> yep. 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 That's that's uh, the, that perspective. And I think one of the things that I see with a lot of people who have uh, success or who learn how to like show up in their life in high caliber ways and unlock their potential is that competitive background. What, what, what impact do you see that your competitive background just in school sports playing a role in your success throughout your life? I think, you know, Brian, that, that's one of the biggest things for me is I love being in business with other sports minded people mm -hmm. because it's, it's the activity of doing everything and, and really trying to win. Whether we won or not, you know, we were always good sports. The, yeah. you know, my dad would kick my butt if we weren't a good sport about <laughs> it. And that's what I, I love about being in business with people, that just they have a drive inside to win. But the way I figure out at it, it, Cemetery Financial and any other uh, organizations now that you're involved with, you kind of realize that you know, you're, if you're not winning, you're learning. And that's a big thing because in like school and stuff, I don't think they teach people to learn. They just teach people to pass a test. Yeah. And to me, that's not nothing. You know, I, unless I learn something, why even do anything? So, you know, if I fail a lot, that's fine. I probably failed a lot more than, a lot more than you, Brian. I got, hey, listen, yeah. I'm trying to catch up. Uh, that's all I'm trying to do. And, but I, but I think you're right. The traditional educational system does not, it focuses on, you know, don't be a bad sport, mm -hmm. but how about, you know, in those times, what about being a good learner? Exactly. Right. I, I love that. I love that concept. Um, what was your, what were you doing, uh, y your first career type job? Oh, I was uh, came out of college. I did go to college and played some baseball. Okay. So, oh. uh, well, so. let's start there. Let's back up. Okay. Talk, right. talk about your, uh, talk about going to college, be, uh, being a college athlete, what that experience was like for okay. you. Okay. Well, uh, as I mentioned, my dad coached all the way through high school and all that. So we grew up uh, as a group in a small little town of doing everything together. Okay. So we ended up winning state championships in football and baseball and stuff like that. So awesome. I got recruited to go play football. Here I am, a five foot eight quarterback, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I remember to the day, I still remember going up to West Virginia University and being recruited to be a quarterback at WVU. And, uh, I'm, I'm going through the locker room. They're showing me the locker room. I've seen these massive guys in there. You know, there's 
five six five seven no no muscle on him mm -hmm. gigantic 300 pounds and yeah. the guy that showed me around he was another quarterback at wvu and i'm like man these guys are our offensive line this is gonna be great these guys look fantastic he goes no they're they're the defense the defensive backs they're the boys are gonna be hitting you and so <laughs> i looked at them guys and said you know what i'm gonna hike up my skirt and go play baseball <laughs> so, <laughs> so i ended up going to play some baseball and uh got through college that way and just had, luckily playing pretty decent baseball so i was able to go to a nice school called james madison university oh, okay kind of got out of the the country living and yeah. learned a little bit about life, so yeah, I had to uh, had to kind of leave my small little town and and go play ball elsewhere, and that kind of helped me move on to realizing that there's another world in a small town. Yeah. Uh, so then went to D.C. to get a, a real job, <laughs> and my first real job was uh, was actually uh, worked at a bank as a loan officer, helping people get loans. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So that was my real first major job. Was that in line with a degree that you had gotten in college, or what was your degree in college? Not really. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of goofed off a lot in college, but I, I took a lot of classes. Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up getting two degrees. One of them was marketing, but the second one was art, because I did a lot of art classes at night because... I didn't want to party with my buddies back then because I was playing baseball. I had to feel good the next day. So yep. I took art classes, and that's where all the pretty girls were. So I ended up getting an art degree, too. Listen, but, uh, motivations yeah. are important. <laughs> Knowing what motivations drive you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got two degrees, but my GPA, I think, was around 2.3, something like that. Yeah, yeah I really busted the yeah. School well, but the yeah. good news is I haven't seen a diploma with a GPA on it as of yet. That's true. And yeah. so, yeah, yeah, it seems like your grades are pretty good here <laughs> so, with what you're doing. Um, so when you look at what, uh, first of all, what position did you play in college? Uh, center field. You played yeah. center field. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. And. What was that for you? What was that transition like from high school sports to college sports? Was that a hard transition because of the, you know, a new whole new level or uh, talk about that? You know, it was a whole new level and it was, it was kind of a scary level. You know, it got to the point where it became really a job to me instead of being fun, like a sport used to be. Yeah. yeah. You know, you were, you were on the field every day for eight hours a day and it was, it was I really a job at that point. I realized that I'm working. Yeah. And I didn't realize sports was working, but it was yeah. in, in college. And when it became a job to me in college, it, it kind of took the luster of, mm -hmm. of the fun out of it, to be honest with you. Yeah. And uh, so after college, I really didn't pursue playing much baseball. Yeah. Did a little softball, but other than that, you know. That's a good sign. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not work. Yeah. That's not work, especially if you do it the right way. That's exactly. why they have the A League and the B League. I play for the B League because you can bring beer to that there softball. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, beer every base. Right? That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I've got big competitive drive yeah, when it comes to that. I will steal a base if I need to. <laughs> uh, so um, you start off as a loan officer. Um Talk to talk to me about uh, the position, uh, the time in your career from a loan officer to where you have you're in the mortgage lending business, um, and you have several offices. Walk me through what that part of your what that section of your life and career was yeah, like. That was, that was a that was a learning career, you know, yeah. learning uh, thing again. And yeah, the good thing was is I uh, when I was helping the bank. Uh, lend out loans for people. I started realizing there's a lot of money in between money. Yeah. You know that? I mean, yeah. you, you know, I kept started looking at all where all these uh, points and numbers and things were going to the bank and how many, how much fees they were receiving by doing a loan. And uh, after a couple of years of working as a loan officer there, then I decided to open up my own mortgage brokerage. Oh, wow. um, and I did, did uh, fairly well in DC area. It's, you know, to be middle class in DC area is pretty pretty nice back then. I thought oh, I yeah. was doing pretty well as oh, a yeah. young gentleman, and uh, you know it went well for about twenty, a little over twenty some years. Really, uh, I didn't realize business. you were in the business for twenty years. Wow, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, doing real well. I had a couple offices in the DC area, mm -hmm. and uh, things were going fantastic until two thousand and eight, and 
the mortgage crisis hit. Yeah, yes, you and I, you and I both uh, both share that. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember your construction st- information. There. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just it, uh, you know, just kind of feeling it in the air. How? Uh, what was it like for you going through? Like, kind of in the build up to that time, what was the peak of your career? Like, mm-hmm. what did the peak of your career look like? Um, and then, what was the fallout for your business mm-hmm. going through that time? It, it was a very humbling time, that's for sure. Okay, um, but. Yeah, for those 20 years, I felt like that's what I was going to do the rest of my life. I, uh, it wasn't passion or anything. It was just providing for my family. I had a wife and two kids. Mm-hmm. And, you know, at that point, responsibility kicks in on you, and you have to take care of the family. Yep. And that's all it was, really. It wasn't that I liked doing what I was doing. You know, you work 10 hours a day in a little cubicle, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it was a living yeah. And you had to do what you had to do. Yeah. Um, it was probably the best thing that ever happened is whenever all the banks got together one day and stopped lending mm-hmm. to mortgage brokers like myself because, you know, I could always undercut the banks. Yeah. I, even though I was borrowing money from them yeah. because they had all the, you know, big facilities, beautiful banks, all beautiful the overhead, buildings, all the overhead. Mm-hmm. You know, I just had a couple offices. Yeah. You know, that would had a couple underwriters, processors, appraisers, stuff like that. And, you know, that was it. Banks have a lot of expenses. Oh, yeah. So I could always borrow the money from the bank and lend it out cheaper than what they're lending it out. <laughs> and they got together one day during this 2008 crisis, and they decided to stop lending to virtually all mortgage brokers across the country. And in one day, my 20-year, 20 25-year career of being a mortgage broker was over. I had to, you know, because they stopped lending money to me. Yeah. When they stopped lending money to me, I was out of business. I had to lay off my appraiser, my friends, underwrite, processors, receptionists for 20 years. My best friends. Mm. And one day, I'm laying them all off. That's tough. That's how hard it day. was. Yeah. It, it, and, but, that, again, good things happen when bad things happen. Yeah. If we don't realize it, you know, we're being, I was being challenged. Yeah. And I was being humbled, that's for sure. Because <laughs> uh, not only did my income go away in one day. Mm-hmm. But the bills stayed. Yeah. You know, I, I was able to lay off the employees, mm-hmm. but I had these offices that I had rented. Some of them were three years, some of them were five year rents. And uh, so I talked to an attorney. My attorney said, just file bankrupt. You won't ever have to pay them back. Yeah. And uh, so that sounds easy. Okay. So I told him to start it. And after about three days of not being able to sleep, because all I could hear, and my dad had already passed, is my dad saying, don't ever cheat at somebody. Don't cheat someone. And if you sign your name or you shake a hand, that you say you're going to do something, you do it. Mm-hmm. And that's all I could do for three nights is not sleep and think about that, mm-hmm. is that I was going to cheat those people out of their rents yeah, that I signed had, for. Them. You made an agreement. Yes. And you could just hear that at your father's voice echoing in your head. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. so I finally had to call the attorney mm-hmm. and said stop it somehow i'm gonna pay it yeah and right it was over fifteen thousand a month oh man yeah and Ooh. i had no income coming no way to make that money it just it drained my entire savings my retirement everything my mm-hmm. entire life to me was over mm-hmm. yeah i mean every month 15 grand going out of your pocket and no income and the only thing that's standing in the way of you deleting that is your work yeah, that's freaking powerful. You know, you can't sleep at night. You know, your health is more important than paying some bills. But it, yeah, it did drain me. Yeah, it was. It took every penny on my all my retirement. Mm. And then when I got into the insurance business, I found myself needing money to provide for business. Yeah, right. You have business expenses. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, it was rough. I mean, I had no money. And I was actually borrowing money from my kids' student loans and stuff like that. I didn't you didn't realize a fifty year old man could get a student loan. Hey, listen, <laughs> listen, where you're breaking new ground. <laughs> you've been to the you've been to the depths and you're like, while I'm down here. <laughs> might as well do deeper. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so yeah, so I funded my business really on college student loans that I had to pay back my kids. Mm. So talk about coming to cemetery with a little ego and a bad mood and everything else. And 
I realized real quick that I had to buckle down fast because yeah. I had to pay my kids back. Yeah. I wasn't going to strap them for their life. Mm -hmm. you know? So you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Thank God we found a company like Symmetry with the culture they had changed my entire life. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it, it's been, it's been awesome watching you from the very beginning of your career here with Symmetry. Uh, just getting your, I remember your name coming to me on a list as I was a base shop mentor and I was like, all right, well, and you know, Casey Watkins uh, tell, telling me, yeah, he's probably not going to need much help from you. And so I'm like, and because I they knew how to big ego. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, well, I, I, th I think more than anything, they knew what you was possible for you and, and, um, and just calling you and you were just out doing your thing, just making it happen. And, uh, just like, didn't seem, uh, didn't seem to need anything and got off the phone with you. And I was like, ah, you know, we'll see if that guy works out. <laughs> and then six months go by and I'm like, where did this guy come from? What is he getting the good, is he getting the good leads? Like, where's he getting all the good clients from? <laughs> I, I was really yeah. wild. Pay a little extra to get that. Just a, yeah. uh, some extra, extra student loans. Yeah, and you just yeah. slide that across the deck. <laughs> I'm already in debt. Let's go in more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> while, while we're down here, don't put the shovel down. We might as well. Um, what you went through that. And I think, I think, people being able to leverage your hindsight as their foresight um, is a gift that we could give those people. But I think, I know that there's people who had aspirations in college. Maybe they thought they were gonna be a professional athlete. They worked and everything was looking good in college and all those things, all, all of it went away when they didn't get drafted or they had that 20 year career where they had it in their mind that I'm not in sales, I'm a mortgage broker or I'm a, you know, for me, I'm a carpenter. This is, this is what this is. And then all of a sudden it just goes away and you're sitting there and it's, it's hard not to get into that victim blaming mentality and then not end up doing anything, you know, come at, not end up shaking that off and coming out of it and reimagining your career. What advice would you have for somebody who's in that moment where what they thought they were and were going to do has just gone away and now they're in maybe a little bit on their heels and reeling and trying to figure out what's next. Yeah. You know, I, I, the advice on that is just knowing that whatever happened to you in your past is your past. And, and you only have your future. And, you know, if you, you've you got to learn what you did. Or, you know, I don't look at what happened in my business as really my fault, but it was my fault. Mm. You know, I could have planned better. I could have, could have saved more. You know, I could have done something different back then. Yep. But when you're going through something like that, it's meant to be. Mm. And it, as long as you keep your head up and things are going meant to be like, you know, starting to, to read that 10 minutes a day changed my life because I could have gone down a wrong road yeah. at that point. Oh, yeah. And, you know, just those little things of encouragement from my mentors saying to read, you know, to pick up a book and just go through it one page at a time so that you can understand it made the biggest difference in my life yeah. because... Brian, there was no, there was, in my eyes, there was no way of getting out of where I was dug into. Yeah. But that little day by day of a habit of changing myself and learning to read and learning how to read at the age of 50, learning how to read is very humbling. Oh, yeah. And especially when your mentor is 15 years younger than you <laughs> and he's telling me to read. Yeah. And so yeah. I started reading because of, just because of that. And thank God it did, because it gave me that little bit of hope every day when I read for 10 minutes that things were going to get better. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't have that hope, you might as well give up. Yeah. And what else is the other alternative? Yeah. You either fight or you go in a hole someplace and stay at your grandma's house or something. I don't know what you do, but you better get up fighting. Yeah. And if a reading can, can change your mindset, then get on it, boy. I tell you what. <laughs> I... I, and for those of you who know Marshall, you'll you'll know this already. But one of the things that's so remarkable is for you to go through that twenty year career, be like in a good spot, providing for your family, have that completely go away, have that fifteen thousand dollar a month bill coming out, having to lay off friends and family, completely having to reimagine your career, having to humble yourself to get to be able to learn from uh, mentors who are younger than you, and getting coached by these people who. There are so many different times I see in this timeline you're talking about 
where it would have been easy for you to do that, for you to just pull back. But now through the work that you've done, obviously, and, and, and you're a worker too, it's like you read and then you implement, you implement at scale in big ways, which is, uh, it's a lot of people don't know how much of a hustler you are. And, <laughs> and I, 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 I've, I've gotten, I, I've gotten a, a view. And, and I think that's one of the things that people do need to know is, is your job is to work hard and make it look easy. And, and, and that's what you've done for a lot of people. But to see you go from all those circumstances to this remarkable person who, who does have hope and you have enough of it, not only for you, but for other people to give other people hope. Um, and I think that point that you just gave is like, when things aren't going well, you better be working on making them better because otherwise that is just going to be hopeless. Yeah. Yeah. It's down in, in the bad, bad road you're heading down. Yeah. If you're not, if you're not being positive about your life, no matter what's, what's going on about our lives, we can always pick ourselves up yeah. and get it. It's just like playing football and baseball, man. Yeah. You, you might be losing about, you know, 10, 10 runs, but you can always come back and win. Yeah. You always can. Yeah. And I, I know there's so many people in America right now that are, you know, down. I mean, yeah. It's a depression time right now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you allow yourself to stay down, you know, you're, you're, you're failing your family, mm -hmm. you're failing your legacy. Mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful thing about when you increase your knowledge of, of different ways of looking at things, mm -hmm. you know, when you increase that, your whole life can change for your whole family. You know, you can be that one person that changes your entire family's life. And the legacy that Cemetery allows us to give back to our family is the most incredible thing in the world. Because I know now my family has changed because of the housing problem back you know, in 2008. I look, my whole family has changed because they have changed their direction also. So, so great. And the lessons that your kids got to live through and see as a result of seeing their dad, like that's a, that's a whole nother legacy of courage of uh, being that person who's a worker and is hopeful and, and all that. That's, that's, that's extremely powerful. Um, so as I saw you uh, get started with the company and, and really start, um, really started getting to know you, one of the things that I noticed from you is you just, you understood habits, like just taking care of yourself, the rhythm of working hard and, and playing hard or resting well and, and doing that. Um, talk a little, talk a little bit about that. Like that, the rhythm of you being able to build a business where you have a great, that supports your life where, because I, I see it all around you, you bring me, you know, always going on trips, enjoying vacations, doing that. And you can be completely relaxed, but still um, at other times really intense and in your business and very intentional. Uh, so. Yeah, and again, I think a lot of that has to do with one book. One of my favorite books is this called The Slight Edge. Yeah. Um, you know, if you just try to get better every day, everything you do, and you can make a difference every day. You know, he talks about the scale. I can still remember the graph in the book. You know, you, you're either getting better every day or you're getting worse every day. What makes you better? If it's in your health, like you mentioned health, you know, by the time you get off the couch from watching TV because you're hungry and you decide you want to walk into the refrigerator, you can make a decision to go get an apple or a bunch of chips. Yep. You know, the chips aren't going to kill you today. Mm-hmm. But they are. If you continue choosing those chips, they're eventually going to catch up with you. Your, your arteries are going to get hardened. Everything else. Yeah. But if you're choosing good foods like the apple or, or certain teas and supplements, yeah. You know, you you're still fulfilling that thirst, that hunger. Mm -hmm. You're filling that up, but you're filling it up with positive stuff that's making you move up that ladder instead of down that ladder. Yep. And that's in everything we do in life, right? You know, it's it's just. That instant of right before you make a decision, what's, what's going to make you better? If you can think about that every time before you make a final decision on anything, what's going to make me better? You can't help but become a successful person in life. And it's because of one buck, one little 1% 1 better a day. J journal, uh, reading as much as you can remember, journaling, one thing that can help me, one thing I can use to help others. Uh, make it and before you go and take an action, 
mm. just what's going to, what's going to be the best thing, what's going to be the best for me in the long term. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, the two very powerful tools there. You, uh, um, you look great for, you know, I don't even want to say for your age. You just, you look <laughs> great. You, uh, it's, 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 I, I, I admire, uh, folks who have really taken care of themselves. You just talked about, uh, your diet and healthy choices. Talk a little bit about that for like the importance of that. When did that, has that always been important? Did you just carry that on from a collegiate career and uh, playing sports or, yeah, I would love to hear more about you. Yeah, I mean, I've always felt like I've tried to stay in shape and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah. I tell you, it was a few years ago I, I, then with Sumter, we did the mind, body, and, and health or something like that. Yep. And I just heard yesterday we're going to get back to that again. So I'm glad about that. So every, you know, for three months, we talked nothing about but, but that. And that health month for me, I took a challenge back then. It was probably eight years ago. You yeah, probably remember, I remember it. it. Yeah. And that was the best I've ever felt in my life. I just mentally tell myself to, to start being physically better. Mm -hmm. And now, my gosh, you know, I was telling you earlier about doing stem stealth uh, stuff. Yeah. You know, I've, I've had eye problems for years uh, where I would see double. Yep. And went to many eye doctors. They didn't know. I mean, they, they were telling me doing all these different crazy things like popping an eyeball out and Oof. stuff like that. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, nah, I ain't going to do that. <laughs> I'll pass. Yeah, yeah, actually, pass. And, actually, this double thing is fine. I'll, <laughs> yeah. just, I'll just cover up one. Exactly. <laughs> patch, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and and I found out that this stem self was working for people's eyes. And ended up, they doing a lot of tests and everything, and they found out that most of the problems I was having was from a tick bite from 30 years ago. No way. Yeah. And, uh, what? They, yeah. And people from the stem fell, they took a bunch of blood, you know, blood tests and figured out that most of my problems was coming from Lyme's disease. I didn't realize you yeah. had, you yeah. were dealing with that. I wow. didn't know about, really realize about it either, because 30 years ago I got bit and yeah. we saw it and the doctor gave me medicine and went away. You know, mm. he said, well, someday it may have a problem, but you know, I was 30 years ago. I don't remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. so, uh, so found out it was really from Lyme's disease. So they did some, uh, some stem cell stuff in San Diego and now my eyes are almost perfect again. It's amazing. I mean, I, I don't see double as much. I still yeah. see a little double. Okay. But unbelievable. Yeah. So then I started looking more into stem cells, um, read a book, uh, oh, his name Robbins Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins. his new book uh, out and he did a lot of stem cells and okay. so forth so I just got back from uh, Cabo doing a two week straight you know every day of stem cells and so forth and man I feel great yeah, yeah I do it's just it's amazing what it does it wasn't just for my eyes it was for basically everything yeah which I had a little arthritis from the from the Lyme's disease and stuff mm -hmm. like that and now it's virtually gone I mean, That's so wild. What it's a, amazing yeah. thing he can do. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I remember we were talking about the treatment with the eye with uh your eyes and that being your first treatment and you were telling me how you were it was getting injected and they were using some sort of device to pull it up back uh, along your arm and neck and uh, it, it's fascinating what, what they can do. They they took blood out of me. Okay. Came back an hour or two later and it was all white cells then cuz yeah. Did a bunch of whatever their thing is. Yep. And then they put it in, put it back in the same port that uh, my blood came from. And then they had some sort of laser that made a noise, uh, a humming sound, made the same humming sound that the cells were used to. And apparently it followed up, they followed up to the back of my head where my eye was having problems. And I walked out of that place seeing three lines better on the eye chart. Wow. And within two, three hours. It was amazing. I could not Instantaneous. believe it. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's wild. And like you were, you, you were just at a point where it was like, it can't get worse. Yeah. Like I, I'm just ready to do anything. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Very good. And so now you've gone and you did a, a, kind of like a, where they take more of your blood, nothing specific, not to a specific area, just a general yeah, stem just, cell treatment. Yeah. And predominantly for the Lyme disease, they had, they had, it was amazing that being over there, there was people there that uh, had multiple sclerosis like for years. And then this one lady couldn't walk five years ago mm -hmm. and she had been coming there every year. And she was able to walk around the block with me. I took a walk with her. She, Whoa. Was, she has multiple sclerosis and just, you wouldn't know it. 
from the things that they can do nowadays. It's amazing. You know, it's not all 100% guaranteed, but yeah. it's amazing. With uh, And Tony Robbins got me into that in life, his book called Life Force. Yeah. And he's done a lot of the, a lot of research and stuff into the stem cells. Yeah. Well, thanks for being my guinea pig. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. No. <laughs> well, let's see how Marshall there. Yeah. The, the third me, eye. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Let me, know if, <laughs> let me know if you start growing a horn out of your forehead or your neck. Or, yeah. <laughs> but... But that's, yeah, it's, it's really remarkable how much our lives can change to a place where I, I know for me, if I think back 12, 12 to 15 years ago, how different my life was, how different, in fact, I was. And I, I think there is a big, that's one of the keys, right? Is like I, how different the community of people that I get to hang out with and the conversations are different and I'm different. And it's, it, it's hard to imagine in those low, low points that, it could ever be this good. You just wanted to stop being that bad. Exactly. And now you're in this place where you get to you get to find those non traditional treatments that insurance wouldn't be able to cover yeah. cover and it you're able to come out of pocket. And I think that's one thing that people don't see. They might say, Well, I'm not really motivated by money. I don't need the fast car. I don't need the big house. It's like, well, what happens when it's health? Yeah. yeah. When when you're in that place where you have, you know, I remember uh, injuring my neck. I've injured my neck a couple of times and there is just absolutely nothing like just being able not, you know, with, whether it's in your case, some part of your body just not working the way that you want it to work, whether it's eyes, neck, back, whatever it is, it's, you realize very quickly that health is the most important thing. Yeah. Right. And it, it, that's, that's awesome. And that's good. And that's thanks to symmetry. You know, I couldn't afford to to do that on my own, obviously, yeah. but you know, because of what cemetery has provided for me and my family, is I'm able to do that, yeah. and I'm very grateful for that. That is for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You and me both. Um, so when it when it comes to that, you somebody's early in business, whether they're getting into financial services, they're starting their own business, they're starting in sales. What are a few things that you would that you would say to to that person? Let's imagine this is Austin, right? And he's getting started. Out, he's getting started uh, in his career. What what is some of that? What is some of that uh, sage advice that you would give them about things that are important for them to do? Ways of thinking that you found have really helped you over the years. Mm-hmm. What would you say to that person? Oh my gosh, there's so much to start. With. I know, oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, and, and again, Wait, this is going to be a four-hour yeah, podcast, yeah, everybody. Be be <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you what. Some of the most important things is just really checking your ego. Mm-hmm. You know, just realizing that you're 100 percent responsible for your own life. Mm-hmm. Make it your best life. Yeah. You know what is which? What is your best life? First, got to figure out what. What do you want out of life? Mm-hmm. What what's what's going to thrive? What's what's, what's your passion? Mm-hmm. And do your passion because once you start doing your passion, like what we do, I don't ever work. I never work a day. Yeah, and I I don't think I've worked a day in seven years. I really don't. Yeah, because it's my passion. Yeah, I love seeing people grow and getting what they want out of life. Mm. And so to me, that's that's the thing is find out really what you want out of life, right? Mm-hmm. And most people don't. Yeah. They don't know what they want. They just want to survive. They want, they want Friday's paycheck. That's right. That's and that's right. okay for a lot of people. But yeah. what happens when your health starts to fail you? Yeah. You know? Then you got a problem. You got yeah. a serious problem. And you've got a serious problem for your entire family yeah. at that point. Absolutely. So what does your life look like? What makes your life happy? Yeah. Do it every day. And you'll be the happiest person in the world. And that's what I feel like you know, at our careers mm-hmm. is being enjoyable mm-hmm. with myself. And I think it just shows up everywhere else. Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How many people can say they're really happy? It's That's because I decided to make this world mine. Yeah. You know, and just take 100% responsibility for that world. I think that I, I, it, it just continues to shock me how many people and remembering when I was in that same position, it's like that those people are the same as me. I'm them. They're me. I remember not being in a place where I felt like I could ask that question because I was where, like, well, I'm just trying to keep it together right now. I'm just, I'm just trying to not lose what I have, let alone anything else. Right. We go through those seasons in our life and you talked about some of those in your life, but I think we're afraid to ask because we're afraid we won't get. And 
Therefore, we guarantee that we don't get. Yeah, exactly. And, and we're afraid to lose out. And so when it comes to being courageous, being courageous, and I think uh, somebody's ability to be confident or courageous and uh, their ability to approach things in this positive way with a positive mindset of like, I believe that if I do the work and I do the things I know I should do, that things are going to work out. And so where do you, what do you see in those people who lack that confidence or don't act at, act in that confidence? What do you see as the biggest thing that's holding them back? Again, personal development. I mean, he, you've got to read to figure out where you're at in life. Mm -hmm. And you've got to associate with the people that are better than you. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are happy with being their own little cobbler, little, little, little cubby hole or whatever yeah. of, of regular friends, doing the regular things, doing everything the same day after day out, mm -hmm. which is great. It's a habit. Mm -hmm. Your habit can be those smaller things or your habits can be astronomical, great things. Yeah. And, you know, you can get into people's minds just by picking up this book and start reading you know, I need mm -hmm. Dale Carnegie's mind right now. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's the type of guy I like to associate with. Yeah. You know, the Ab absolutely amazing people. Yeah. And that's to me is associating with the right people is one of the best things you can do in life. I think when people think about that, they still may fall into a trap. Um, I, especially when it comes to like right now in the world, it is, and it's been almost impossible for the last. I don't know, decade, probably two decades to turn on the news without it being bad news. Mm. Right. Yeah. So, uh, do you watch the news and, and why, what, why don't you, or why do you? <laughs> well, that's, that's, I haven't really watched the news for quite a long time. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is a depressing to watch the news and, and not that I put my head in the sand and go on, but I sort of do because you know what? <sighs> Politics aren't sitting around talking about me. Mm. Why am I going to sit around talking about their politics? They don't know me, you know? So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's just one of those things that I don't like to put negative things in my mind. And it seems like the news puts a lot of negative things in your mind. Mm -hmm. And that makes you a negative mindset person. Mm -hmm. The more positive stuff that I can get off of this guy versus hanging out with you, mm -hmm. I'd much rather hang out with you than turn on the news. Every day of the week. Yes, <laughs> Every <absolutely>. day. <laughs> yeah. I get done watching the news and I'm just like, oh, yeah. there's no answer. <laughs> there's no, what the are we, is falling. what are we all going to, oh, yeah. meanwhile, I've got a business that's running great. <laughs> I've got family that's healthy. Yeah. You know, I've, I'm more successful than I've ever been. I'm more fulfilled than I've ever been, but I'll stink and watch the news and I'll be like, oh, things are just about to go down the tube. Though. <laughs> <laughs> the world is ending. You know, it always is. It's always been ending. Yeah. You know, anytime you watch the news, for the past 60 years of my life, mm. the world's ending. Yeah. No matter what, we were always in crisis. Yep. Not me. Yeah. I'm not going to be in crisis. I'm not going to participate in that. Yeah. And, oh. and that's something that I continue to see with, with you is like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let someone else tell me what's uh, going on. I'm going to, I'm going to live it. Yeah. I'm going to live it. I don't, I don't need the news. I'm creating. The yep, news. Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm creating some headlines that look at this person win. what, you know, look at our yeah. team. You know, our, I'm so proud of these people and mm -hmm. you know, I'm living the, living the life that I, uh, that I've always wanted to live. And you continue to create those headlines and, and you give people the freedom to write their own headlines too, mm -hmm. rather than having to read them in a newspaper. It's like, Oh, you know, mortgage rates are going up. I guess things are going bad, yeah. <laughs> right? Instead, they're like, I'm working today. Yeah. I'm growing today. I guess things are going good. Yeah. How, how, how is your influence in, in that way uh, in other people like that? How has that changed your life? Oh, that's insurmountable. Like, right, man, like I always look at every, every moment of our lives as an opportunity. I mean, yeah, you mentioned the mortgage rates are going up. Yeah. You know what that means to me, Brian? That means there's a lot of loan officers looking for jobs mm -hmm. because they're not doing loans right now. Yep. Half of, when I got in this business, probably half of my organization were ex-loan officers. I used to call them the loan officer graveyard because it was during that mortgage crisis, right? So we make a crisis, and somebody makes a crisis, and we either got to 
be in the crisis or solve the crisis. Mm-hmm. To me, I hired a bunch of loan officers. Yep. Just like right now, I've been recruiting loan officers <laughs> left and right. They yep. are they. These are great people. They're used to making a lot of money. And guess what? They're not making a lot of money now. Yep. And they need to get back to that level. Mm. So I like dealing with people that are used to having success. Yeah. Because they've already got done all the groundwork. Most of them are reading. They're associating with the right people, stuff like that. And now they have a new opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so do I. Mm -hmm. It became up from from a crisis. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And that's the way I like to look at the news. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I see your I see your uh, fingerprints just in the in the lives of the people around you. One of those people, well, I was just I was sitting in. Uh, we we had a uh, we had a conference. We had a training yesterday, and I was sitting there. I was watching Jacob, and I was just like, "Man, you got to be so proud of that." I'm I'm not a, I'm not even that guy's mentor. I'm a running buddy with him, and I'm like, "I'm so stinking proud of that dude." Like, <laughs> and just so the way he communicates, and yeah. just from his heart, and just like watching him as a father, as a husband, mm-hmm. uh, as a friend, as a business owner, yeah. like that that's got to do your heart good to see that. That does, Brian. And you know this, which, you know, the, the people you've mentored and coached is there's nothing better than watching somebody do really better than what I'm doing. I mean, they, they're all my guys do better than I am. You know, <laughs> I love that, that they're better than me. Yeah. You know? And, you know, to see guys like Jacob and Ryan Miller and these guys that are just they they become leaders through this company. Yeah. That's what I love about Cemetery. It's, it's not insurance or financial company it's it's a personal development company yeah. and when people like jacob poe come up and i see him do his very first meeting in front of a group of 10 people mm-hmm. and not being able to finish that meeting yeah. uh, when he first does it versus today he he talks in front of thousands and thousands of people and commands the room absolutely versus the very first time he did he walked out of the room scared in front of 10 people. Yeah. <laughs> That's so exhilarating for me to see people grow like that. Mm. And I know you've had the same feelings with oh, a yeah. lot of your team. And oh, yeah. It's so great. It's just so grateful to be able to see people to get what they want out of life. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. And and creating that, creating that headline by finding more people who are ready, you yeah. know, who are in the same position that you and I were. 12 years ago exactly. as we were trying to figure out life what's next mm-hmm. you know um what what is when it comes to happiness i feel like people in business they focus on success and sometimes they get it but there's there isn't that crossfade where they start to focus on their happiness mm-hmm. i talk about success being having more uh, success equaling having more and fulfillment equaling needing less and when you have success and fulfillment, you get this thing called well-being. Mm-hmm. And if I were to uh, if I were to name a few examples of people um, who have that well-being, you'd definitely be on the short list. Oh, thank so, you. So talk about that in your life and and where that comes from. Uh, I think it comes from a book. Again, pretty much everything I get from a book. You know, the happiness of Angie. You've read oh, the yeah, happiness yeah, of absolutely. Angie. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that made me understand what happiness is. Mm-hmm. Once I started really diving into it, it's. Yeah, the goals of getting things are great, but, you know, there's always something else, you know? Yep. And you just got to be happy with yourself. What makes you happy? Mm-hmm. You know, because it's not the money and, and all the success. It's it's the things like we were just talking about. Seeing Jacob do well. Seeing, you know, seeing Ryan command a room of thousands. Yep. You know, that's that's more gratifying to me than you know, houses, cars, and all that stuff. I mean... Mm-hmm. The houses and cars are fun. Yeah, it's They're awesome. great. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it's more fun. It's more fulfilling to me to see people up on stage yeah. that that I may have had a small little part yeah. in their life to have helped them because other people have helped me. Yep. You know, and it's just, it's that's what gets me up in life, you know, is to see other people succeed. You know, see, even, even you, Brian, I remember, you know, 12 years ago too, yep. you get on stage and you had that little laugh and, little nervous tick and now you get up there and you know you're you've probably been one of the best growers in this company from personal development thank you and i mean i'm i'm so happy for you when you're on stage because you own it you know you're 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 just owning it you know you're in material and 
you're fantastic at delivering that material. Right. And I'm just proud to be your friend, man. Yeah. Well, hey, I'm 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 proud to be your friend too. And um, that that impact is in. Uh, I definitely am really thankful for the impact that you've had on my life. Whether you know you purposefully doing it, and sometimes just by association, right? It's like it, it's a successful, but not guilty by association, yeah. but successful by association, and uh, that's certainly that's certainly been the case. And and just to watch your continued impact build, watch your legacy. What you know, what is what is being a part of the uh, Wayland Agency? What does that mean? It just continues to mean more and more because you have more and more leaders beside you just multiplying um, what you've done for them and then bringing their strengths as well. And it, it's really powerful. And I'm just thank you for taking the time to sit down with us, Sharon. And if you didn't get anything out of this, I, I'd recommend watching something else. Like <laughs> I, I'd recommend just like, if you can't get anything out of this, please unsubscribe and uncomment or something because- Go watch the news. Yeah, yeah go watch the news. You'll definitely get to Fox, MSNBC, whatever yeah, you need yeah. to watch, you know, but um, but yeah, um, yeah, the, the opportunity here to get to continue to sit down uh, with people like yourself who have grown themselves, who have done the hard yards, and are at a point in their life now, it just continues to open up the future for for all of us. So thank you. You got it, buddy. Anytime, my friend. Yeah. yeah. Love you, bro. Love you too, man. Really appreciate it. Thank you all for joining our conversations. We're developing this platform for simple, profound tools and techniques that can help you get the best out of your life and more importantly, unlock potential. You can find me across all social platforms at the Brian Delaney and online. Come visit us at thebriandelaney.com.